Hey guys, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. This is my Wicca Wednesday video where I'm going to show you whatever I've been working on in the craft room this week and maybe talk to you a little bit about what I'm going to do next week. So I hope everyone had a wonderful Mother's Day or a wonderful weekend. My plans for Sunday were to just kind of hang out. I have a rocking recliner chair. I never recline it because my cats always go underneath it and I'm always afraid I'm going to somehow get them caught in the hinges or they'll get stuck up in there or something. And I don't want to ever have to deal with that. So, plus I don't always recline. So I'm fine. I just like to put one foot down on the floor and just kind of rock it back and forth. So I was going to do that and maybe do a little knitting or work on my embroidery Santa and then just watch silly worthless movies and just waste the day away. But then when I got up, I decided uh, with the rain was the rain was supposed to come. Yeah, everybody got rain. Big whoop. It sprinkled and that was it. It didn't even do enough to make the ground very wet. Now other places south of us, they got a lot of rain. So they've got a few inches. We didn't get hardly anything. We just got a sprinkling, like I said. It was gloomy and yucky all day, but nothing to come from it. So I decided I was going to take all the hibiscus plants that I just purchased and I was going to repot them and get them just so that they can start spreading out their roots. And because, you know, if you've ever bought one and you open it up and the roots are always tangled around, they had some really like really big roots that were really going around and around. So I'm hoping they're going to take hold really good. So I thought I'd go ahead and put them in just these little these little potting containers I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I figured afterwards I can just put flowers in them. And then instead of having the flowers in the ground, I can just put them in various places around the house or the yard. And I can just have flowers in them so they won't go to waste. So I thought I'd let them just sit in there maybe about a month so they can root themselves really well. And then when I'm ready to plant them in the ground for the hedgerow, I'll be all set. I did confuse a couple people over on Instagram. These are not the seeds that I have originally purchased. These were plants that Walmart their little neighborhood grocery market that my kids go to. We're about five miles apart and we each go to a different neighborhood market. Mine sells things like tomato plants and basil and other spices and stuff like that, other herbs. And theirs sells hibiscus and another climbing flower. So I went over there and I picked some up on Wednesday and I well, got those all replanted. Then I decided, well, if they still have them for that price at $3.97, it's a really good price because the container was about this big and they were nice and they were really full of green leaves and a lot of them were flowering already and yellows and pinks and, and um, reds and oranges and stuff. So I picked all those up. So I thought I'd go ahead and let those grow and I could put them along my side yard and then let the neighbor deal with, you know, I could block off the neighbor that way. And then the seeds will go all into my backyard. So that way I can get the seeds growing and as they grow I won't have to worry about that neighbor until they're actually done and moved in they're probably going to put a fence up based on the way I'm looking at things I'm hoping they put a fence up and if not I, I still want to have the hibiscus whether they put a fence or not it just makes it easier for me they put a fence up I know exactly where the yard ends and starts and I can just go ahead and plant them but so yeah I'm going to put the seeds back there and I bought these for over here it's going to take me 25 of them to make a border that I want Thankfully, she's got uh, several feet of a chain link fence in the backyard, so I don't have to worry about planting anything that way. But yeah, so I repotted all those in the morning, and then I realized, one, I ran out of potting soil, and two, I did all the measurements to figure out how many I needed, and I had 10, and I needed, what did I say, 23, 24, 25, somewhere up there. I think I was just figuring, we'll get 25 and we'll go from there, so if any don't make it, I'll have extras. So I thought, well, that puts me a little shy, right? So I decided, well, why not? It's my day. I've got nothing else planned. I went up to the store. I went to the Dollar Tree and got more pots. Then I went to Lowe's and I got more potting soil. And then I went to Michael's and I picked up something. This is going to be a very rambly video. I'm going to put a warning in the front so you guys know this is not a typical Whip It Wednesday. We're just going to mix it all up. I'll show you what I bought at Michael's later so we don't get too crazy. But I decided, well, I had Christmas money left over from the kids that I've been saving to buy yarn for a sweater. And I'm really kind of ready to start making a sweater. I'm going to make an indoor sweater for me and then an outdoor. I'll get to that later. So anyway, so I went to Michael's and I picked up the things I need there. And then I went over across the street to Walmart and I picked up 10 more of the flowers. My kids bought me some for Mother's Day and then I picked up the rest for myself. So then by the time I got home, I'm like, gee... I may as well just repot these too because 
Apparently this Walmart does not water their flowers. So while I bought them on Wednesday, they looked gorgeous. On Sunday, I had to pick through to find ones that were in the dark and the shade in the back that hadn't gotten all wilty and droopy looking. So maybe when they come back, they'll, I have my kids looking out for me because they go grocery shopping too often. They don't do the weekly thing like I do or the monthly thing. So I said, if they ever go on clearance, let me know. I'll tell you, you know, how many I want and you can grab them for me because if they pop them off at 50% clearance, then I might put the hedge down to the other side too, or I can plant them a little closer than I'm planning on it. So I just pick more up and I repotted more. So I basically spent my whole yard, my whole mother's day on the front porch, repotting hibiscus and other flowers. And you know what? It was fun. I had a good day. I was worn out and tired by the end of it. I went out and stimulated the economy. I did not socialize with anybody, but hey, that's perfectly fine, right? I recently had an order that included a couple of my dishcloths. And they asked me, hey, you know, do you ever make the face cloths, do uh, the little face scrubbies and stuff just to clean your face and everything? Like I thought about it in the past, but I've never really made them because I didn't know if anyone would actually want them. So I thought I'd go ahead and test out a couple little designs and try the different yarns that I have on hand and see what works and what doesn't work based on the way I crochet and how I think I want them to look. So I started out with the really soft yarn that I have for doing the dishcloths. Now this works really great. I think instead of the dishcloth, these really soft ones would be good for a basic face washcloth for in the shower or just to really scrub your face up good. I think that's a little bit soft and they say the softer yarns don't always work that well for a little face scrubby because you want to be able to take off your makeup and a little bit of an exfoliation without like you know really scrubbing your skin off and stuff so i did one of those and that's not too bad then i tried it with this little bit of a fancy edging on it let me show you this guy up close so you just put them in your hand you know you get them a little wet if you put a little cleanser on it you know and just scrub your face it's really self-explanatory right so then i have this little bit not much of a roughly edge but it's just a little bit of fanciness and as you can see, I haven't blocked them or woven in the ends or anything because I just wanted to see how they worked out first. So that wasn't too bad. Then with that same yarn from actually the same skein, I went ahead and made this one. And I tried with just a simple single crochet border around it. And I think I really like this version. I think the single crochet border is going to hold it on nicely. Once I give it a little steam block, it'll set in place. And as I said, this yarn is a little bit too soft and fine for it. So I went into the regular, probably sugar and cream or something like that. And I did just a standard one using that yarn, put the single crochet border around it. And I think that's really good. I think it gives you a nice shape, a nice size in your hand. I don't know how I feel about the variegated like this. I feel like you know, the colors are fine and I love them and I love this in a dishcloth and I would, if I, you know, wore makeup and stuff, I would use this no problem. But I feel like sometimes people want just one solid color and they want it to be nice and clean. I don't buy solid colors for my dishcloths because I kind of like the wild and crazy. But if this is something you guys and enough of you are interested, I haven't looked to see what the price point is for selling them and how many normally go in a bundle and blah, blah, blah. Because if you guys are interested, I will go ahead and pick up some solid colors of cotton yarn unless you say, hey, you don't mind and you like the crazy variegated colors. I really think it looks nice and clean and crisp and classic in a cream. But if you're taking makeup off with it or just cleaning your face, you really don't want to have a cream one because it's going to show all the dirt and stains from the makeup. Just like the dishcloths, these go right through the washer and dryer with no problem. People have been testing it all over online and YouTube and have been using these for years and they work really well. They A lot of times you can buy these when you're buying the handmade soaps and they go nice together, a little bar handmade soap, and then some of these little washcloth circle scrubby things, these face scrubbers. It goes in a nice little package and it's really good for birthdays and holidays and you know Christmas and all that. 
So there's that. I think I'm going to go ahead and make a few more just to see how they are. And then, like I said, I need to do a little bit of research before I pop them in the shop. So let me know down in the comments if you would be interested in purchasing any face scrubbers and if you would prefer them in a solid color and maybe what color you would prefer or if the crazy yarns are fine with you. Now, I worked on these little bins, these little fabric trays, bins, baskets, whatnot on the Friday's tutorial. And if you watched it, you'll see that I was trying to make a remake of this container. But this one, I'm pretty sure has a really sturdy stabilizer in it. Just because I, I feel like both pieces of fabric have a more of a heavyweight stabilizer on it. And I don't have any of that. And the stores are basically sold out. And I'm not going into Joann's right now. Because when I do, I don't want to just run in and grab one thing. And I don't want to do the store pickup and the mail and stuff. Because a lot of times you also have to purchase more than what you really want. Like more yardage and stuff. Plus I like to go in and feel the stabilizers and interfacing. I know I use that word, you know, back and forth. I know they're not exactly the same, but stabilizer and interfacing are pretty close to being the same. So, but I like to go and I feel it. I want to feel how sturdy it is and how thick it is. And you just can't do that online. So I came close. I will probably remake it again just to get to this point. I am going to try some with some foam, I think, just to see how that works out. And then on my patrons, we went ahead and made a long organizer basket. And you notice how like my lining is all crinkly and wrinkly and not very nice? Well, come to find out that you should probably read every single word that's in a tutorial and not just skim through the pictures and go, oh, well, this is how we always do it. We always quilt the outside and put the lining in. Well, I made it inside out. You were supposed to quilt the lining and leave this on the outside. And now, of course, if this was pressed better and I hadn't stitched up the sides and stuff, it would be much nicer. But yeah, so that's what we made on Patreon channel this past week. So that's what my patrons and I worked on. I, I like it either way, and this little bit of wrinkly fabric is not going to bother me. Once again, fill it up with chocolates or other goodies, and nobody's going to see the basket. I do like these little monkeys. For any of you that were waiting on the conclusion of heavier comic book board or just a regular cardstock, Drum roll, please. Oh, yeah, the heavier one worked out better. Most people like this. They preferred it. I kind of agreed, too. I just, I was being stubborn. I was hoping. Now, a lot of people do make postcards with this, and this is perfectly fine. I still think this is a bit thinner than, maybe it's because of the glossy picture that's printed on it, but this is a bit thinner than the normal card stock when you get your postcards in the mail and stuff. They said that it works perfectly fine and went through the mail nice, but I just don't like, I don't want to take chances and I feel like this becomes more, okay, granted it's just scraps, right? But as this progresses and I'm going to, I've started a little a sketchbook where I'm sketching out little designs that I want to work, you know, coloring it in, determining what is that, so that when I sit down and I make these, uh, I keep having these ideas in my head, so I need to put them somewhere, so I'm going to make a little sketchbook for myself. And I think that this just becomes more of an art piece, you know? As I said, this is just scraps on here. It is not arty. It's not artistically done. It is just a fun and funky, something to do with your scraps. I do like the one with the salvages better. I think that's a little bit more of a an artful thing, even though it's not anything on it. But once I start painting with fabric and stuff, I want to have something that's nice and sturdy. So I went ahead and I ordered a couple of packages of the comic book board. I did find that you could buy it cheaper at Walmart. I have never seen it at my Walmart. I'm sure it's there somewhere, but to order it at Walmart, it is cheaper. I couldn't do to where you go to the store and pick it up. You either had the, I think what it is, usually for me when I can't pick it up at my store, instead of having it mailed, it means my store doesn't carry it. I didn't go as far as to research if my store carries it or not, but the shipping for the packages were $9. So when you add in the $9, the cheaper amount for purchasing them went over what it would actually cost me to purchase them from Amazon. So I just bought them from Amazon and they'll be here tomorrow. So, or yesterday, they'll arrive on Tuesday. So I'll be all set to go ahead and make more of these. I'm gonna start out with making at least 10, of, well, finishing off the ones I've started. 
and I want to put at least 10 of these into the shop and then I'm going to go from there. So I did spend all of Sunday repotting plants and doing that and what did I do the rest of the week? I worked on videos for these and I worked on other videos. You saw the one for the for the 20k giveaway so you saw that and I did the the extra videos last week where I sat and chat with you after the Whip It Wednesday. I will be doing more of those and I've decided that they're going to be totally random. Like this video is going to be very long because it's very scatterbrained right today. But as I do those videos, I think I'm going to keep, well, I'm going to keep them separate from Whip It Wednesday, but I'm going to post them on Sundays. So I'm going to let it be that my patrons will see it a day early and then it'll come up on YouTube on Sundays. So if I have any of those rambly ones, because both of those videos were like a half hour or more each, instead of having them all in one day, let's spread it out so that you'll see something on Wednesday, Friday, and then if you have something good going on, it'll go ahead and pop up on Sunday. Like I did a little video this morning walking around the yard and talking about the, the repainting of the, the hibiscus and stuff like that. So when I get that edited, that's going to come up. You'll see that on Sunday. So you're not going to get a bonus video every Sunday, but whenever I have something extra chatty to bar talk about, or I'm always extra chatty, so there should be something on most Sundays. When everything settles down here, I want to start taking you on a tour of my town and show you different places so that you can kind of see something you maybe you've never seen before or see how it looks down here in Southwest Florida compared to wherever it is that you live. I believe I mentioned before that I am doing a little quilt blocks with my patrons. We are going to be doing two quilt blocks a week. I am making the one to go with my Margaret Lewin block of the month. Yeah, block of the month so that I can get that into of a larger size. So I have a nice snuggly lap quilt for the couch. And then I'm also making an extra one that's just kind of scrappy of whatever I happen to have in my stash. So that when we're all done making them or throughout the time that we're making them, I can show you guys how to use these pieces. Well, show my patrons. That's the plan is to show them how to use these in different projects or in a quilt at the end. So we're going to be making all different size blocks. So if you just make them and put them into a quilt, we need to figure out how to puzzle piece them all together and get them to work, right? So we started out with the simple four patch, Margaret Lewin colors, my scrap. I know you guys who've been around for a while can see the difference. Those are both six and a half inch squares, of course. And then since I'm doing the six and a half inch squares for my quilt, I went ahead and made a snowball block. I did not, there's not a lot of contrast in all of these fabrics and I didn't want to make them the same. So I didn't want to use a lot of the same fabrics. So I didn't like, I didn't want to make another one with these. So I wanted to spread it out based on the fabrics that I was given. So I made a snowball. These aren't solid, so they kind of all blend together, but you can see the shape of it. So that one's a six and a half inch unfinished. But then for my patrons, we went ahead and we did the 12 inch block, 12 and a half inches unfinished. And I went wild and crazy. I went with these alligator crocodile people. And then I drew out the green cause I didn't, it's really quite blue when you look at it. So I pulled out the green fabric under the corners to grab out some of that green just to kind of blend it all together. And that forced the background to go back a little and bring those greens out. And one of the things we also learned is we learned how to get the bonus half square triangles. This was attached to my cat this morning. I'm not sure where I put the rest of them. So I've only got one of these. But with my patrons, we went ahead and we turned ours into a pinwheel from our 12 and a half inch block because because the squares were much bigger. So when we did the flip and stitch and all that fancy stuff, we got some larger ones. So I really love this. And I think this would really make a fun little boys quilt. You could always even still use this. So if you made all of these blocks, so this ends up being six and a half inches unfinished. So you can go ahead and put four of these with one of these and just kind of mix it all together. And I think it'd be a really fun boys quilt or change up the fabrics, of course, and have a girl's quilt. Or change up the fabrics again and just have a fun quilt. That's all I worked on in the craft room this week. I really don't have that much of an idea what I'm gonna work on coming up. I do know I want to take those postcards and finish those off so that I can get those taken care of. I have some cards that I need to make for an order. 
and I'm going to show you what I purchased when I was out at Michael's because it ties into things I'm going to be working on possibly this week. Now for the cards, okay, so anyone who does any type of scrapbooking or card making or anything, you guys already know how expensive cardstock is. Cardstock for a bundle of it, it was $19.95 at Michaels. Now I don't know how that compares to anywhere else. I don't know how many pieces were in it or anything like that. I didn't really pay attention because it was $19.95 and I didn't want to spend $20. I had 20% off coupon off of everything, so it was really great. But I didn't want to spend $20 just to get more cardstock, not knowing exactly which ones I want because nothing jumped out at me. They did have them buy one, get one 50% off, but then I would have had to spend more money, right? So I was just looking around and looking around and they have these little 180 sheets. They are six inches by six inches. Look at the rainbows of colors. They're only $5. And then I had a 20% off coupon. So I thought these would be fun to play with. Plus they will make good. I'm pretty sure I can use these to line my envelopes. I think I use, I wanna say I use like a four and a half inch square or four inch square or something like that to line my envelopes. They have, they have all the different ones lined up like this. I don't know what to do with those. And then they have the little labels, so that's really great. And then some alphabet ones and then more of the colors. So I thought these are really nice. So whoever does things like cards and stuff, I thought this was a really great little bundle for just $5. You make a little thank you notes or something with it. I like that it even goes into the grays. And I wouldn't even say these are blacks. These are just a darker gray. So yeah, so that was really great. So I thought five bucks plus 20% off was a really good deal. I picked that up. I finally got to get out. I don't know if my Michaels was open before or not, but they were open yes, uh, Sunday. So I got my 1 8 inch ribbon to do the taco ornaments so I can finish those off hopefully this week. Then I just picked up some quarter inch black and white. This is really good to put on the little tops of the zipper bags and stuff like that. Since the zipper is a cream color, depending on the bag, so I grabbed these. I do have my eye on some fun tassels on Amazon, but someone really should take Amazon away from me because I've been purchasing way too many things for the shop and building up my supplies and stuff. So once I get done building the supplies at the beginning of the year, then for the rest of the year, I won't have to actually purchase anything. I'll be all set. That's kind of a trend of what I do. I like to buy all that I need for the year, like at the beginning of the year, and then I can just kind of float through the year and just go with whatever I happen to have on hand. So I pick these up because I'm always looking for some thin ribbon anyway. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree, actually. These come in a pack of three for a dollar. They're just these, they're not like super sturdy. They're not too bad, they're just, they're pretty good. I think they would work for a variety of things. It is five and a half by five and a half by 4.125. So I thought what I'm gonna do with these is I'm always looking for a place to put the little bits of fabric. When I'm cutting things up and I'm trimming projects, I wanna save it for card making and for other art quilt projects, but I have to take it and make a pile of it over here. Then I have to sort through it and decide what goes into which of my plastic shoe boxes. So I thought this would be great that I could just go ahead and toss the pieces in here. I can hang this up on the wall or whatever, leave it over in the corner. And then when they get full or I'm ready to start those projects, I can just pull it out. Cause I like to have those really thin strips for like the different types of string quilts and stuff. So I wanna have that on hand, but I, I don't want to constantly having to stop what I'm doing or picking it up at the end of the day. This way I can just pour it in here, store it, and when it's full, I can deal with it. When it's full, I'll make something or I'll put it into its proper place. So I did pick up these. They had them in white and black, but I kind of like the clean look of the white. Kind of helps those colors inside pop a little, right? And the last thing I bought was two pounds of love. Now this is coming out a little bit of a brighter blue. This is denim. This is one of those, not your super faded light colored denim. Let's see if we can kind of peek it in here a little. Yeah, it's a little bit brighter than, that's okay. Blues and purples are terrible to show. 
You guys know what denim looks like. I would say this has been a washed denim jacket that's been well loved, but it hasn't been passed on to another person yet. So it's not that really light faded. And I'm gonna make a sweater with it. I am going to make the antler sweater by Tin Can Knits. It's a cardigan and it has cables that go all the way around the the upper portion of the cardigan so it goes across the chest and over the shoulders and then across the back probably about this much worth of a nice big chunky cable all the way around it i've had my eye on this i started it with the bright colored sweater with all the crazy colors for those of you that have been around for a while but it just wasn't going to work. So what I'm gonna do this time too, because I don't wanna to have to keep purling back, I just wanna knit in a circle. I'm going to knit this as if it was a pullover, and then I'm gonna steek it. And for those of you that aren't knitters, that means when I'm done knitting the entire cardigan, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut straight up the center and turn it into a cardigan. Have I ever done that before? No, but that's okay, right? there's always a first time for everything so I'm going to knit this into that sweater I'm going to do all that beautiful cable work this starts at the bottom and you work your way up and you knit your sleeves separately and join it all in it's that type of a thing but the actual cardigan part of it you do it you know back and forth like this and then the sleeves are separate so it's not like a front and a front and a back so that should be exciting. I'm going to bring you guys along with me when I actually get to that point. I will probably, I'm probably gonna at least do a gauge swatch this week just to see what size needles I want. I want, I have to check with the pattern and see how much ease it has because if, I know it's not, I know it's not a fitted sweater, at least as far as I know. Cardigans usually aren't too fitted. So I wanna go ahead and check and see what that is so I can decide how many X's I want in it because I want it to be nice and baggy and roomy. I am going with Pound of Love, which is an acrylic yarn. It is from Lion Brand. See, these have 1,020 yards. That is a lot of yards. I need, I need 1,600 if I do a 2X sweater. And it's all gonna depend on what my gauge swatch looks like and what type of fabric I'm getting with what size needle. So then I figure it's okay, because if I have extra, I can make mitts, I can make a hat, I can do all kinds of things. But I'm going with acrylic first. This is gonna be my bumming around the house sweater. This is, I have three cats. One of them likes to lay on top of the desk at the end of the hallway. So when I come down the hallway into the kitchen or living room, she likes to just stick her little paw out and she puts her claw into my shirt. Now you can't, you can only do so much with cats, right? You can reprimand a dog and a lot of times they'll actually listen, but even then they're animals, they just do what they want, right? It's like trying to train a toddler, but they just stay at this stage forever. And then my other cats, if I hold them or if I'm sitting in my chair, they like to just, you know, get my attention by putting their claw out. So I wanna make sure I have something that I can wash a lot due to the cat fur in the house. I want to, I want it to be cozy and comfortable. I don't want to have to worry about that I spent too much yarn, money on the yarn. This is $9.99 for a pound and 20% off discount for each of them, right? So that's a pretty good deal. So if something happens to it, I'll have extra that I can repair it. I'm not going to be too upset if I made an entire all cabled sweater with really expensive yarn and then the cats destroyed it. So after this one's done, I am going to cast on another sweater. I am going to, I don't think I'm going to do the hand dyed yarn unless I come across a good deal because that gets a little bit expensive, but I do want to make myself a outside of the house sweater. So I want it to be more like a jacket. So I want it to be all cabled. I want it to be thick and heavy and warm. And I want to use that as my winter jacket so that I wear that outside of the house and I can use the really good yarn because the cats won't be tearing it up. You know what I'm saying? I won't come home or wake up in the morning and find that I forgot to put my sweater away and the cat has been sleeping on it all night. So these guys are, these guys are really big skeins. I love buying them this way. You might get a couple knots in them and you might not. So if you're lucky, it's a pound of love. So you're meant to, in the beginning, to make an entire baby blanket with it. So that way you don't have to join in yarns and weave in ends or anything like that. You can just go start to finish and you're done. So it's also really great for making a sweater. But at a thousand yards, 
I, I like to have, I need a bigger sweater and I like to have it a little bit roomier and baggier. So that's what my plans are for that. So beyond that, same old, same old. I haven't decided what I wanna work on extra during the week. That stuff usually just pops into my head and everything sounds good. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go try that. So thanks for hanging out with me again, guys. I know these videos, you love them and some of you do not like them. But for those of you who love them, you love to sit back and listen to my chitter chatter. I don't show that much. So you guys can go ahead and do your dishes, cook your dinner. You can be sewing or knitting yourself and you can only peek up every now and then when you know I'm talking about something new. So I'm glad I was able to keep you company today. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and I hope you have another wonderful weekend coming up. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.